hope this video finds you well. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to take the example where I built a multi-window um, decanter application, really simple, and we're going to restructure it so it uses what's called a class structure. Now, if you're just beginning to learn how to program and you're playing around with this, class structures aren't necessary. And I'd encourage you not to dive into them if you're not going to take the time to understand what they actually are. Um, but nonetheless, it's good to start setting up your, your TK Enter programs using class structure when you're ready because it allows you to do a couple more things with a little bit, little bit more ease. All right. So before we begin, let's just remind you what we're doing here. Oh, well, this is my, if you commit push, we're going to take this simple program, which is a simple TK Enter GUI, um, where we have multiple windows. So I can jump around by clicking these buttons. Um, and we're going to convert to a class file. So I'm going to take all of this content from my original and I'm going to paste it into here. So it's all pasted in here and I'm going to save it now. So let's remind ourselves, what is a class structure? Well, a class is, is, a, is a special type of code where you can create objects from. So think of it as a blueprint to create some sort of complicated variable. Not a perfect example, but for what we're doing right now, a way to explain it. So it contains a number of variables as well as as well as as functions. So what we're going to do is I'm going to build a class and I'm going to call it just for now app and a class has um, what are called attributes or what we call fields. It has constructors and it has methods or behaviors which are methods. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of this stuff here and I'm going to copy it in there. So I'm going to start by taking all of this part, which was the building of the GUI component, and I'm going to put it in the constructor. Because what we essentially do is we, we take the constructor, we type this, and when you run it, when you, what you use a class for is you use a class to instantiate an object. An object is simply um, something you build based on the instructions in the class. And the constructor is a special method that's called the first time. So if I come down here, and I'm just going to tab all these in, what I have right now is I have a class called app, and it has a single constructor, and this is the instruction inside of it. You'll see that this is called, this constructor is called underscore underscore init underscore underscore self. That is the standard in Python. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just delete that for a second. And if I save this, oops, if I save this and we run this, nothing happens. Well, the reason that nothing happened is we've created this class, but we haven't actually constructed an object yet. To do that, we come right down to the bottom here and we just say a equals app. So what we're doing is we're creating a variable a and then we're using making an app object using that class. And so when it sees this, it says, oh, I know what I need to do. I need to go and run the constructor. So it comes up here, runs the constructor. So now if I save that, oh, I can see back here I did save it, save it. I come in here and now I run it, I get a bunch of errors. Well, what those errors are right now is that I have this command here, but I don't have the functions yet. So let's just for a moment, let's just get rid of these and let's just make sure it actually runs. So I'm going to delete that, delete that. And we're going to delete that. And I'm going to run this again. And there it works. Now, the buttons don't do anything because I don't have those functions, but it works. But there's a little bit of a subtle difference I have to. So what happens when you construct an object, you make what are called instance variables. Instance variables are variables that are created every time you create an instance of the class. So this root, I want it to be an instance variable. And to do that in Python, I put the word self in front of it. So every one of these variables, I'm going to put the word self in front of it. And what that means is that now it is an instance variable for this class. So when I come down here and I make, when I invoke app, and then I store that object in the variable a, it's going to have a bunch of instance variables associated with it. I can use this blueprint to make another one. I could do b equals app. And so what's going to happen is when you have an instance variable, A is going to have its own set of variables, and B is going to have its own set of variables. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me do this. I'm just going to pause it and put self everywhere. Okay, I think I got them all, so let's run it and see what happens. There you go, it runs. It does nothing different. Um, this is purely about 
um, an organization that allows you to do other things later on. Now, what students will sometimes miss when they're doing this is to put self in front of all the variables here, but they'll forget to put self there. Whenever you refer to this root, you have to say self dot. Okay, so now let's go back here in this example that doesn't use class structure, and let's remind ourselves what we did. We built the GUI, and then what we did was we, we bound these functions to it. So what I want to do is these functions right now are standalone. I'm going to package these functions in with this class. So when I make an instance of the class, or I make an object, I get a copy of all those functions. So to do that, I'm going to come in here and put it in the behaviors. Now, what I'm going to do is I have to tab them all in because they are part of the class. But because I want all of these to be instance methods, I want to put the word self in here. That is how I indicate that this is an instance method. And again, when I access frame one, it's not frame one, it's self.frame one. I have access to all of the instance, instance variables inside these instance methods. So I'm going to say self dot, self dot. I think I could just copy this a lot faster if I do this. Self dot, self dot, self dot. So now if I save this and run it, oop, got to get rid of my old version that's up there. Let's get rid of you. If I run this, it looks exactly the same. Buttons don't do anything yet because I haven't bound them, but what I have is I have this class called app, which creates an object, and this object is going to have all of these, you know, it's going to have all of these instance variables I create, and it's going to have these instance functions. But what I want to do is bind them. So how do I do that? I simply do the same thing. I say command equals, but because this is now an instance method, I have to say self dot. So I'm going to say self dot, and what did I call it again? This is one to three, so I say FNC one to three. Oops, there we go. So let's copy this, and let's paste this, and this is going to be function one to two. So let's save this, and let's just see if it runs. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to X this out. I'm going to run this. And now if I bring this down, I hit 1 to 3. There we go. Now I have to do it for the other ones as well. So I'm going to come put comma, paste. Oh, I already had the comma there. So let's get rid of that. And this is going to be function 2 to 3. And this one is going to be function 3 to 1. I save that. And now this should work nicely. So I hit 1 to 3, 3 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 1, and it works. So on the surface, whether you use the old version, which was here, that didn't use a class structure, or this version, they kind of, they, they, it looks exactly the same. But by setting up your, 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 your program as a class, it makes some other things a little bit easier, specifically when you're managing variables and moving things around. So I want to be clear, this is a really rapid um, conversation about um, classes and objects. I can't stress enough to take some time and really make sure you, you go out and learn and understand how they actually function and what they are, and don't just copy the code and, and tweak it. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out.